Hello everybody and a good day to you all the day. I'm talking about the Alienist, season number one, episode number three, Silver Smile. And here we have the team on another case because they find a body, they find another body. And if you watch them in action, I'm trying to examine it. And you have um Sarah, the people of the Dakota Fanning, looking at this brutal body and watching her how she deal with it. Because the show pretty much starts off exactly where I left off last time with um, John waking up inside that um, brothel. Not exactly sure what happened to him. Now they have implied that he was raped, maybe, possibly, I don't know. He still had his clothes on, well you know, he didn't have his pants on. And that could mean a whole lot of different things. Because they, they, made a, they try to say that he's going to have a hard time sitting down. So, oh, that's really messed up. If they, if they, if they had him raped by those, those guys, that was really messed up. It's really messed up. But either way, he doesn't remember it, and they, they think that because this that because this happened to him, it's going to shut him up and keep him out of the keep him keep him quiet because rumors will get out, and then that people then that he will will just be ruined for the rest of his life. But this is this is the weird thing about this this scene, this thing, this time and today, because today all they got to do is take out a camera and take out a cell phone, film it. And upload it to the internet, and then everybody will see it, and they might say, "Oh my gosh!" And then his reputation will be ruined, be ruined right from the start. Because a lot of people now they like to um, judge first without knowing what's actually going on, and so he probably been criticized, kicked out, lost his job, his whole life been ruined, and then it, it, it all messed up. Who knows? But still, because I think half the kids, like half the boys, look like like underage, so I believe he messed up. Ugh, ugh. But still, nonetheless. He started off having a bad day. And that leads to them finding a body. And he watches them in action, trying to figure out exactly what's going on. Trying to get, and you said you had um, Dr. Kressler trying to still try to get into the mind of this killer, trying to find out what his motivations are, trying to figure out um, why he's doing this and what's caused him to do this. He's trying to understand the mind of a murderer. And so so he's pretty much and he's but he's frustrated because he's not getting the answers that he wants. But he's getting closer and closer every time. But he's just not getting there fast enough. Cause he can, cause, because the thing is, though, he can't stop this guy just yet until he understands what he's doing and what his purpose is. He started getting a little, he started getting a little clues with the help um, of Sarah. She starts to put two things together. But the fact that he likes heights and he always, and he always do these killings around water, too. So that, that gives him time of information about a little bit of what his motivations are. Somewhat, but not quite there. And he also figured out that uh, he gets uh, some kind of sexual... Um, satisfaction from these killings as well. And so he saw, he saw, so that she sees him getting a little more inside this, um, this, this crazy man's mind. And you also get a little bit of understanding about Dr. Kressler and people who, the people who you have associated with him. I mean, you have his, um, you have Cyrus and you have Mary. Both of them killed somebody. Which I think is interesting. You got a you got a psychiatrist, well, an alienist during this time, who are trying to understand the minds of murderers and trying to capture them, and he also has two people under his employ who have killed somebody. I mean, you have Mary, who seems to be in love with um Dr. Kressler, which is obvious. Kills her father, and then you have um Cyrus, who killed somebody too. He, and the thing is, though, he had he had both of these people under his employ. Now I don't know if um um little Stevie killed anybody killed anybody as a, but either way he works for him too so that's kind of interesting that's interesting to find out then you find out a little bit more about um John because you see her his mother on this episode she's played by Grace um um Jambroski and she wants John and you find out that uh, um that John and his father never got along. They don't really go into exactly why or what caused it, but they, they, they never were close. But the mother, all she wants John to do is find a woman to be with until they get married and have a respectable life and have some, and have some children so she can have some grandbabies. Because that's what she thinks was, was the most important. And then you got John trying to, trying to connect with this woman who he had nothing in common with. And this girl is so desperate to, to, for him to like her. That is just so awkward and so weird. Like, oh. And then you have Taylor Roosevelt, who he doesn't trust the people on his employee in the police station because a lot of them are dirty and corrupt, which because a lot of them are involved because they're involved in, the, in all these um 
these um boys are being murdered. I think, they, I think they know more than what actually was going on. They're trying to hide it and suppress it. And you got Theodore of Roosevelt who trying to figure out exactly what's going on. They're trying to go up against them. And so you see this, you see this like this a good cop trying to trying to take down the bad guy, but also trying to fight against this corrupt system that he's that he's in at the same time too. So overall, another great episode. You start this this world is starting to get a little spoiled a little bit more. You start getting a better understanding of the characters that that we're watching. Um, um, you find out more about um Sarah and her, and her father that her father committed suicide and how that affected her. Um, like, like I said, you got John and his relationship with his father, and you, 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 you see how they how John and Sarah um paths connect. And Dr. Chrysler, you start to see a little more about him, even though he's trying to act like he's um, different from everybody else and a little bit above them or smarter than. But you start to see he has some, some of a relationship he has with Mary. And I'm not, I'm not sure if it's romantic or not, or if it, he is attracted to her, but he's too scared to act on it. Maybe because he, cause he, cause he knows that she killed somebody, and so he, he wants to study her, but at the same time, he wants to be with her too. And you can tell that Mary wants to be with him. She's waiting for the opportunity for them to be together. But for some reason, he keeps pushing her away. Like he, like, he pushes her away and treats her like crap sometimes. But yet at the same time, he likes, he wants to apologize and connect with her. But he's, he's, he doesn't seem to know how to do that. Like, he's, he's almost like a robot in a way. Like, how do I connect with humans? How do I apologize for snapping at you earlier? I don't know. So I'm just going to walk up to you and, and, stand, and stare at you awkwardly and then walk away. But, but at the same time, you see Mary, how she responds to that. And that was interesting because it seemed like she understood what he was was not saying. Like, amazing. So, like I said, overall, another great episode. Really enjoyed it a whole lot. I can't, I can't wait to see exactly how this is going to go down when they find out who the murderer actually is. Because we find, we find more and more clues each and every day. So, leave your comments down below. Let me know what you thought about this episode of The Alienist. And if you haven't watched it, check it out for yourself. Don't take my word for it. Hopefully, when you watch it, you will enjoy it and have fun watching it, too. But pretty much all I got to say about that, so give my channel the big old like, hit the thumbs up, shabam, and subscribe to my channel and share. I really would appreciate it, like I always say, in my dreams and in my life. I am the Ninja Rabbit. Uh, peace out, uh, peoples.